can't do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. So what do you do? You network. Who do you network with? You never judge. You never judge. I network with Uber drivers. Now, usually when I take the Uber, I do that Uber, what's it called, Uber Black? Yep, I do Uber, I do the luxury Uber. Why? Because they're, 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 they're taking around other CEOs, other executives. Again, the consumer mindset versus producer mindset. You're not gonna be cheap and say, oh, I'm gonna take the Uber XL. Oh, I'm gonna take the Uber Pool. What are you thinking about? It's like when I fly, I only fly first class. My daughter's never been in the back of a, a back, back of a plane. Recently, she asked, the, she asked the captain, she goes, uh, the captain comes through and gives these little wings. And she goes, anything you want, you ask Captain Tom, and I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. And she goes, can I see the back of the plane? He goes, what? That's kind of a funny request. I've never been in the back of a plane before. <laughs> but why? Why do, why do you think I do first class when I travel? Experience. No, it's comfortable. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you, my friends, are jumping into a business that is about money. Not about houses. Not about apartment buildings. It's not about homes. That's just the that's just the, the vehicle that everybody wants. That's the widget that everybody wants. You're in the business of raising capital. And where are you gonna get capital? So you gotta you gotta figure out I go to art galleries. Right? I'll go ahead and I'll go to different types of auctions. People say if you go to auctions, you pick up properties at auctions? What I, what I pick up at auctions is money. Now think about that for a minute. Who do you think goes to auctions? Did, what, do they, what do they have in their pockets? Check. Yes, they have these cashier's checks. They're ready to rock. Is everybody at that auction getting the property? No. Now what do you do? You wake up and you say, hey, how you doing? My name is Bruce. And notice that you're, you're an investor just like I am. Maybe we can collaborate together and make a lot more money. So I, gotta, I don't have any projects right now that are on tap because all my projects are funded. But when a project does come up, would you be interested in working with me? Would you? Yeah? Great. Let's talk. Boom. Is that easy? Is that easy? So when you're when you're out there, you're always raising money. When people are sitting on the on the plane next to me, when they tap me on the shoulder and say, what do you do? I want to make sure they have what? Money. They're either going to be an investor for one of my hedge funds or for one of my projects. Uh, just the way that's the way I think. I'm always trying to put myself in the eye of the storm. So I speak Chinese fluently. I'm fluent in Chinese and Taiwanese. You would say, well, how did you get fluent in that? I guarantee it wasn't sitting here in America. I got on a plane, did what other people do not want to do. I jumped on a plane, I went to Taiwan. I graduated from the top university out there called Taida. Anybody from Taida? He's a Zhongguan man. Who's the? You mean like a Zhongguan, is it? Taiwan? Taida is the best one, right? There you go. So we can take, I have properties out there in Taiwan. But you think about this, guys. You can do whatever you want to do. It's what I, it's what I tell my kids all the time. The, my oldest one will ask me. She, she's not to that point yet where she's asking me. She thinks Daddy's Superman. <laughs> but she'll ask me. She goes, Daddy, are there any limitations? I go, there are no limits. The only limits there are are those that you put in your head. And what I'm teaching my kids is the same thing I teach my students. It's about your environment. You know, she goes to uh, um, in Foster City, Audubon. And I'm okay with public schools, but I take it upon myself to educate. She's testing for her black belt this year. She does piano lessons, 6.30 in the morning, every morning without fail. She takes private Chinese lessons. So I keep, I keep my kids busy and I keep them, she, she's got her own blog now that she's going, Corey saw it, you know. And it actually, we just got picked up by a TV producer that we're in talks with, says, with that to have Kathy do uh, on our show for a financial education, a financial education show. Did she write those scripts herself? I said, yes, she did. Those are her. That's what I just, it's what I taught her. But it's all about your environment, about, you know, the environment that you put yourself in. You know, so in this business, if you want to learn this business effectively, you've got to hang around the right people. And you've got to start, you can't waste time. When you think about this, this is what, this is the 10th of February. Six weeks of 2019, gone. You can't go back to January 1. Pretty soon February's gonna be gone. So you have to, you gotta think to yourself, I gotta stop procrastinating and just do it. And the, I'll tell you this, the quickest way to do it is to team up with somebody who is doing it. Don't let the fact that you can't raise money or you don't know what to do be your, be your, be your cause. You've gotta get yourself in the game of doing this. 
They really do. When people talk about, well, Bruce, go back to that, you know, finding deals. I'm new in this business. Start networking like a beast. Go out there and network. And don't and network with a purpose. When people, people ask you what you do, tell them you're a residential commercial redeveloper. That's what you want to tell them. Some of those you've been. You're a residential commercial redeveloper. Put that in your mind, because if you don't believe it, no one else is gonna believe it. I'll finish up. Oh, so don't she. Okay, okay. Don't she. Don't she. Okay, take this one, I'll do that for you. Mommy will be upset with me for letting you walk around with your socks, but she's not here. So when you when you when you think about, about finding properties, I'm always networking for either raising capital or finding deals. And you never you never know what you're gonna find. I can almost guarantee you, I don't know how many people in the room here. How many people are in the room with it? Oh, uh, 50? About 50? About 50. Yeah. I can guarantee you there's going to be someone in the room that's going to come up to me after I'm done here and say, I have a project and it needs funding. Or, or they're going to say, can we do, can we work together on some potential future deal? Always happens. And I'm open to that. Some guys say, oh, you know, I'm standoffish. I'm not standoffish because you don't get anywhere by yourself. In this business, it's about building your own community. So I, I network with Uber drivers. Think about this for a minute. So I pick up a lot of probate deals. How do you think I get those probate deals? Who do you think gives those to me? What is it? Yeah. Uh, attorneys are kind of selfish. I hate to say it. No, not attorneys. But it's, it's a good cause. I've tried working with attorneys before, Corey. Not for me. It doesn't fit my personality. And I hope there's no attorneys in the room, because otherwise if I just did, <laughs> that's what you know. Um, funeral directors. Funeral directors. Think about that for a minute. Who are they sitting across the table from? Yep, a lot of times, I mean, this, uh, this is called state state. Most people in America haven't done very well with their finances. They can't even afford to pay the taxes on the properties they're about to inherit. So they're in a panic mode on doing what? Get rid of the properties, get something out of them. So and funeral directors, not just like from a personal experience, unfortunately, but funeral directors are probably the most kindest people that you can meet. They want to help them with others. So if you build a relationship and take a look at funeral directors in your area and you go out and you introduce yourself, and you're low-key about it. You're not like an aggressive beast, kind of like in the beast mode I'm, I'm usually in. So I, I bring it down several notches. But I'll go in and I'll say, hey, you know, I'm, a, I'm an investor and I know that a lot of times you meet with people, it's a very sensitive issue. And they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. They don't need that added, they don't need that added pressure at that particular moment in time. And all I want to do is help. Yes, I want to make some money out of the deal too, but I'm gonna, I want to help them. And you know, can I leave you my card and you can kind of refer them? And funeral directors have never even asked me for a kickback. I give them kickbacks on it. I have. But you know, the the, the those are things that people don't think about. Everyone wants to talk about direct mails. I don't deal with direct mail. I do very, very little direct mails. People talk about what they call bandit signs. You guys heard about bandit signs? Mm -hmm. Those signs that say call us ugly homes. I'll call them, but they're for they're for a different motive, a different reason. Why do you think I call a bandit sign? Net, network is one, but I'm also calling them because I'll call them up and I'll say, so you're buying homes for cash? Yes, I'm buying homes for cash. Can we meet? I'll meet them in person and I'll find out what their criteria is. All I'm looking at them is as a private money lender, another source. So the same thing with, with those, the bandit signs, same thing with auctions that you're going to go to, same things with uh, the funeral directors. Um, and my friend Corey says, attorneys, you want to go down and you know, get you some, right? But the, the, you know, those are the things that you, you have to get to look at this business differently. You're because you're in the, only, the thing that will fail you in this business are those two things. You can't find properties that are quality properties to get involved in. You know, and that's why you have to go back and you have to determine what type of properties do I want to get into, what the area is, and you can't raise money. So you find a property and now you don't have money. That's a bad situation to be in. So going back to the money for a, a bit, when you're looking at that. If you wait until you have a property, I hear that all the time. I want to wait until I have a property. I can't approach Corey right now for money because I don't have a property. But if you wait until that moment where you have a property, now I'm approaching Corey for money, do you think I'm coming at him from a position of power or desperation? Because now I got the time clock ticket on 10 days until it expires. It's not what you want to be in. So I meet with my friend Terry. I said, Terry, listen down, talk about what kind of finances you have. Now Terry doesn't want to grow the most finances. He's planning at the right relationship for you. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on, Terry. So we talk about finances that he has. How liquid is he? Where's the money coming from? How much does he feel comfortable with? Is he zip code agnostic like I am, or does he want to stay in his own backyard? Well, those are all things you want to filter through. And then you have things like, what do we call it? Credibility packets. 
where you're giving your private money lender so you look professional, a little bit of background about you, some pictures and, and photos of some of the projects that you worked on. Those are things that are going to accelerate you in this business. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, most people don't do that. Let, let me just ask the room here, 50 some odd people, how many of you actually have credibility packets or even know what a credibility packet is? Very few hands go up. So you're already separating yourself. How many of you are always raising money? That's what I'm talking about, right? So you're, it's, it's not that difficult to do this business. Let me show you, share, share a couple things with you. And this is the other thing that will kind of, it'll kind of be an eye opener for you on whether or not this is, um, this is my son right here. He's pretty cool. He's gonna be a ball player. You know what his name is? So my girls, Kathy with the K, Sure. Can, I'm gonna have him be a quarterback. That's where the money's at. <laughs> Ken say with the K. My wife is Kelly with the K. So my name is Bruce. It's not he had to be a B. I don't want to name him Junior. So did you guys ever watch that movie, uh, Men of Honor? Good uh, Junior, Good Cuban Junior played uh, Carl Brashear. He was the first African American Navy diver. So his name is Brashear. Nice. Yeah, Brashear Dinger. So my girls, Kathy, her middle name is Bruce. Kenzie's middle name is Bruce. His middle name is my wife's middle name. Oh, my wife's first name, Kelly. Anyway. Um, so these are some of the things that, um, that you're gonna take a look at. And, and uh, many of the projects, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll buy sight unseen, why? Because when you're putting it through a deal analyzer, it's all about the numbers. You should know the numbers. And this is the other thing, having your agent on board ahead of time is the way to go. You don't wait until after you get the project. Because then I'm, I, I, I've sent Eric out, I've sent Ramon out, I'll say, tell me what that project will sell for once I fix it up. And they'll know. And I'll say, do you have a buyer in mind? And they typically, okay? And they typically will have a buyer in mind because on those, uh, typically if you think about it, they're, if they are killing it in this business, not everybody is going to buy be the winner, just like at the options, and buy the project. So there's gonna be somebody that says, man, I wanted this neighborhood, I wanted that type of home, and I missed out. There's nine other people that, that missed out on it. Well, my agents are going to those nine other people and doing what? A private showing. It creates demand. You okay, Vivian? So, yeah, I know, yeah, you almost tripped. So when you're looking at this, a lot of the projects you'll take a look at, you'll be like, oh gosh, and I really buy this? That's what my wife said. My wife's in this business with me, she, but she still says, gosh, are we really gonna buy this? <laughs> 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 said, yeah, can't you imagine we can't move in and have the kids here? <laughs> look at this thing. Look at this. Now my girls, you'll see my girls in here too, because I, I take them everywhere. I got a truancy notice last year from Auto Body. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, I'm teaching them how to make money. Boom, look at that. Wow. So it goes from this, than this. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful, Linda? Where's Linda? Incredible. Watch this. Now watch this. This one's more revealing. So let me tell you a little bit about this. You didn't get and no one's exit this. strategy. So on the, you know this one, maybe? No, the other one was the one trampoline. So this one here, this is the middle of the daytime. What do you notice about this picture? It's very dark. Yeah. We're in the middle of the day. The sun is beaming down. It's dark. This is in Baltimore. And um, Let's go party, party. in this particular area, I violated one of my own rules. It happens. So the school districts didn't rank an eight or nine or 10, which is usually what I like to see. It ranked a seven. And it made a difference. Because you know what type of buyer that I was picking up? First time homeowners. Yeah, first time homeowners. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is it needed the FHA loan. We put it on the market. After it was done, you'll see the pictures in a minute. Boom, immediately had four offers. Boom, 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 boom. More than what we were asking for. The problem was, failed, failed, failed to qualify. The last one went through. So I was like, Whew. I won't do that again. I probably won't do it again, but yeah. <laughs> it happens, right? It happens. So look at this. So look at this. So, and here's the thing about contracting. So I went out to this one, and I'll tell you why I went out. So I never used to, I never used to coach before, Carter knows that. I never used to coach before. But I want to be remembered when I'm gone. I'm 55, I don't know how long I'll live. I might live to be 100. 
I might be, be 56. Who knows? Nobody knows. And when I'm gone, I'm, write, I'm writing my own eulogy. So I want to, I want to be that guy that says, man, Bruce Singer positively affected my life. Now that crazy guy in Santa Clara in the embassy suites, he said a couple things that just stuck with me. I want that. It goes well beyond my kids. These crazy kids, there's only so much they're gonna be able to do. And uh, I want to be able to transfer that experience and knowledge and passion that I have to my students as well. And so I started doing, I started doing modules about projects I was doing. And I create like private Facebook communities for each and every project. And there's a lot of reasons I do that because it makes it easy to build momentum with the self watch too. But I would create these, I would create the, 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 these modules and I started going ahead and teaching my daughter about this. And I wanted to take her out to the project so I could take the textbook knowledge. I want to take the textbook. I want to take the textbook knowledge and be able to give her the real life application. And it's worked. And if you sit down with Kathy, she's eight. She's been doing it since she was four. So this is this is it's 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 it's, it's unusual for her to, to to hear people say, Well, I got a job working from nine to five. She asked me that one time. She goes, What is that? She was at school at Ottawa and she's having this thing with her teachers. Where, where the teacher says, oh, We're gonna do career day. Or she's in third grade. And what what do you want to be when you grow up? What type of job do you want to get? It came to my daughter Kathy, my, my daughter says, I don't want a job. She goes, I own a business. <laughs> right? So but she's a kid, she plays games and does silly things and stuff. But you'll see her, you'll see her in here. I take her out and get her involved as much as I can. But when I was out there with the contractor, you know what the contractor do you guys ever remember these walls here? Yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys know that? Yeah. You know what the contractor, one of the contractors, several of the contractors, two contractors told me what they were gonna do? Paint. Paint over it. Yeah. Why you can paint over it? And no one will ever know. I said, I'll know. And he made the contractor for me. So I took, if you take a look at this again, this is very dark. This wall, gone. This wall where Kathy's in, gone. I want to open it up where he came in and had the wall factor. So you can see the stairs going up there. Mm -hmm. So that wall, boom, gone. So she's in the family room. This is the dining room. The wall behind this door is the kitchen. Gone, gone, and gone. Open it all up. There's the kitchen. I told my wife, I said, can't you see yourself making me bake the <laughs> <laughs> mm, Since you are crazy. Man, crazy, huh, Mama? There's the kitchen. There's my wife right there. You can't really see if she's on the side. There is wow. now. Now look at this. You remember this? Mm -hmm. This? Yeah. I left that there. Wow. Open it up. So now when you walk in through the door, look at the light. Mm -hmm. What a difference it makes. Look at the light. Now technically I use Navajo white for the walls, but you got I made an adjustment for this area. We didn't do Navajo white, but it came out pretty good. But you can take a look at this. Open all this up. Got the staircase going up. Look at that. Boom. Gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? All opened up. You know, it's not that difficult to do. It really isn't. It's, it's, it's a matter of systematizing your business. And you go from, you don't, you don't not, that, not that there's anything wrong with the, the contractors, but this is your project that you're getting involved in. If you want to scale the business, and you really want to do this as a business, how many, how many of you actually want to do it as a business? If you want to do it as a business, it's not one project a year. You know, yeah, you'll, you'll have some good pocket money, but you're not going to build a business. And, and, and like for me, my big passion is trading the stock market. I run a hedge fund, a very successful fund for the stock market. But I always thought to myself, am I like Michael Jordan or Bruce Lee? Or, is that transferable over to my kids? Can I really teach them to be like me when it comes to the markets? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I'm teaching them about, you know, candlestick charting them, different price patterns and stuff. And they're learning that too. But um, I mean, my, 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 my baby, my two-month-old baby in his room doesn't have the Disney pictures. He has chart patterns. <laughs> you know, so I, want, I want to be like breathing air for him. I know I'm nuts. I know. It's just I believe in your environment is who you become, right? So, um, real estate investing. The reason I chose this as a complement to my portfolio is because I just like I started this. I think it's easy if you're willing to do the work. Where you're going to work the hardest. 
is networking for deals and networking for money. It's as simple as that. That's where that's where you put that's where, what is going to make the difference for you is networking for deals and networking for money. And if you're sitting there asking yourself, do I have the capacity, the capability, the talent to go out and find deals, network, and raise money? And if that's not you, it doesn't mean this isn't for you. It just means maybe you're the person that's going to be hiring that salesperson on your team that doesn't know how to do this business, but will work with you on building out your business. I mean, typically for me, this is the whole thing about it is, I'm a pretty shy guy. I really am. And people don't believe that. I mean, because I've had my own TV show. You look me up, I've had my own TV show. Uh, we just got picked up with Property Pitch. I'm one of the deal makers on that, kind of like a spinoff of uh, the Shark Tank. Um, uh, Gabby's doing her, going to be doing her own show. But I'm a shy person by trait. So if you take me to a social gathering, 